Welcome back to Think With Games. This time I have a game where you can mess around with some polygon shapes. So first we can do an intersection here. So if I make a new shape here, you can see that was the only part that overlapped. We reset here. Then we can also do where we merge two polygons. So let's say I make a shape like that. You just combine them together. We also have exclusion. So if I make a small shape here, you can see this was the only part that they overlapped, so that's not included in the new shape. And last, we have a special slice mode. So I can just make a slice, it makes two new shapes. So this could be really cool if you wanted to make a game where you're capturing enemies. That's why I have the wire remaining, quote unquote. So let's say we reset back to the intersect mode, and I want to just capture some part of this, but I'm limited in how much wire I can place down. So let's see, I'm running out of wire and still had a bit left. You can see it's a cool game if you do something like this. So here if I make a really large shape, then you can see even if I click here I can't complete it, I don't have enough wire remaining. By the way, thanks for 100 subscribers! The main component for how we do this is using geometry shapes, so that includes the line 2D and polygon 2D. So the way that the polygon 2D works, you just make a new one, and we add it as a child to the scene. Then we just set the points that make up this polygon. So this is that example polygon that we keep cutting up. We also use the line 2D and add it to the scene. This is how the player draws in their points. So we set the color to black, and this just makes it so that the edges are less rigid. Next we want to add in the key binds. So you want to have place point. This is how the player places in the points that they want to make their line out of. I have mine set to a left mouse button. Then we have a function called place point. This is how we place down a point. So you might have seen this code before. We get the mouse's position, and then make sure it's within the bounds of the screen. Then we can use that place point action that we just created. So first, we want to check, do we have more than one point already? If we already have a point placed, then we want to check the distance to that point, and that's how much wire we're using up, essentially. But if we don't already have any points, then we can place for free, because it's our first one. So we'll just add that point to our current line. The term line 2D from Udo is a little misleading, because it's multiple lines being stitched together. It's just a collection of points. So let's go ahead and add this function to our process block. So if we run the game, if I click once, it looks like nothing happens. But if I click somewhere else, you can see it actually did place our point. So we need to make some special code for that, for the case that we only have one point existing. So right above our process block, that's why we add in this code, adjust for first point. We can call this inside of our place point function that we created before. Basically, when we place down our first point, then we place another point slightly offset from that, so it looks like they actually drew something, so that the player is not confused. But then, if they actually do place in a second point, then we can delete that extra one that we just added. That's what we do here for when we want to complete the shape. As you saw, it was like connect the dots once the shape's totally filled in. So first we want to calculate the distance to see if did we actually complete the shape. We can print that out to check things. Now if you want to have multiple modes, you have to go back to the top for that. That's what this code here does. We have all of the different modes built in to Godot. It's intersect polygons, merge polygons, exclude, clip. These are the function names. We can have our code call whichever one for whatever mode we're in. That's what this variable is going to track, the mode that we're currently using. So if we go back down to the bottom, you might recall that the slicing mode was a unique case. So that's why we have a special check for it here. Because that one, we don't care if they actually completed the shape or not. We only care after their second point. So that's what this is checking. If our current mode is the clip mode, that's what the slicing mode was. So we want to make sure that we have more than one point, and also that the distance was less than 20 or slicing mode. And then we just call whichever function applied in our case. We're going to track current mode that we're using. So we just pass in the starting polygon and then the current points that make up the player's line, and we can print it out just to make sure it's working. So let's go ahead and call this complete shape function. Now we want to put this before adjust for first point. That way we don't have to check for that special case when we place in the offset point. So running the original example here, 
If I make a shape like this, you can see we end up with four polygons compared to the original one or two. So that's why we have to use overlapping polygons in the intersection calc because this returns an array. And we can just add each of those to the scene and set their color to whatever you want. And we want to set their polygon to be whatever the new polygon that we just found was. And we can print it out. And it's assumed you would want to remove the starting polygon because they just cut it up. So if we test this now, it seems to work. Now let's just make it so that they can change the mode that they're in. So we can put this right above place point. We just use the change mode action, which you can set to whatever you want. I have mine set to right click. It's a pretty common trick. We add one to our position in the list. But then to make it so it doesn't go beyond the end of the list, we just use modulo and we can print out to show what mode that we're currently in. So now I'm in the merge mode. And to make things simpler, we can have a restart button as well. I just have this set to R for me. So we just reload the current scene so that each time that we slice up the shape, we don't have to restart the game. So I'm currently in merge mode. Let's try it now. There we go. Seems to work. I have noticed a small bug with the exclude mode. I'm not sure what causes that. Might be a bug in the engine itself. It works here fine. But if I go to exclude mode and then I make a shape that separates them, and it just doesn't work. You can see it made some small mark here. Or if I go right here into exclude mode, it strangely does not work with the stuff over here. To show the amount of wire that they have left, we can just add a canvas layer. And then onto that, we can add a label. And we can set the font size of this label to be, uh, say, 30. And if you want, you can center it horizontally and vertically. And you can set the position to be the center right. And you can always expand it how you see fit. We can rename this label to be a wire label. Name it the same here and set the text. There we go. If I place down wire, it uses up my wire remaining. That's how you can work with Geometry 2D and Line 2D in Godot. Thanks for watching.